Grazie Paolo, grazie. Scusa signori, mi dispiace. Il mio italiano non so bene. So I have to talk to you in English. I'm sorry. Um, I'm here because la tutto il mondo sta bruciando. The world is burning. And our internet industry, for instance, notice all these people who are not here. They're downstairs having coffee. They don't care about creating jobs for normal people. They're in the internet. They have a steady paycheck. They're happy. And this is true around the world. All the people in our industry are very happy having jobs. Well, that's not really the way it is for most people. Let me play you a video. They came in their thousands from all over Italy and flooded the streets of Rome. Disgruntled workers, the unemployed and pensioners united against Mario Monti's staff labor reforms. We are here right now because young people are the most penalized generation since the Second World War. Monti should cut his own salary and pay us our pensions. Among the protesters is Sandro Fanta. Well, something tells me that Signor Monti will not be paying her pension. Okay? The reality is that the haves are keeping their money and the have-nots, you know, too bad. Okay? This is the way the world is today. And the reason why is because the way that we call a job is still the old-fashioned way. People still think that a job is 40 hours a week. They still think that you go to the office. They still think that you pay your taxes and you have your health covered. See, in the U.S., we have to pay for our own health. You see? So the problem is that we need a new model to represent what the job is. This job is a job that you work at home. It, you use virtual tools. You connect via the Internet. And we think of the computer as a new kind of hammer or screwdriver, a new kind of tool. And this is really the real digital divide that we have. We talked about this earlier today, where the people who are not comfortable using computers are confused over how they're going to fit into society. This is especially clear here in Italy. Now, uh, I started on this path because there was a, a speechwriter named Daniel Pink, who was, went, he was working for Clinton. He was writing speeches, and he went to the government and he asked, how many freelancers are there? And the government could not give him an answer. They were not counting the freelancers. They don't know how many freelancers there are. So the reality is, is that over 25% of workers today are freelancers. Okay? What we know for sure is that if we try to solve the digital divide, the separation of the haves and the have-nots, this is not about getting a free laptop or free net access. Okay? This is not about going and taking a class in Microsoft Excel. Okay? Because when we do this and we give these free services to people, this does not create them a job. All right? So what we have to understand, and we again talked about this earlier today, is that the digital divide is about fear. It's about fear of change and people not understanding that a computer is the fundamental tool that you will use to make a living. You see, there aren't enough jobs out there. We're moving from manufacturing to service-based economy. And we know that where the growth jobs are, are in these online tech skills. So what we feel and what we're working on is a system to get people to feel comfortable using a computer as a tool to make their living. See? And that is how we're going to uh, create jobs for normal people. So this system is a hybrid of technology and sociology. You see, I was for 21 years living in California. And I believed that technology would all, solve all the problems. So I was working and I have a, a company that builds social networks for companies like Mondadori. So we built this system for Mondadori and unfortunately, nobody came. You build the technology and nobody comes. And we've seen this over and over again. What we say, the ghost town, where the place is empty. Nobody wants to go to a social network that's empty, you see? So I thought, really the problem is that I'm living in California, in San Francisco, where we have the echo chamber. It's the echo chamber that was Le Web 
last week in London. It's the echo chamber of the technology community that is so busy going from job to job and making so much soldy that they don't realize that most people out there don't have these jobs. And most people out there, they go to Facebook to waste their time. They're not being productive. They may have an email account, they know how to go to YouTube, but they're not getting a value out of online technology. So this is the essence of this system we're trying to build, is something that combines technology with a sociological aspect where we go out into the community and make sure that people get value from online technology. It's as simple as that, okay? Now, what I'm going to describe to you is the system. It's a complex system. Why? Because creating jobs is complicated, okay? All right, so, so we've got this system, and we're going to combine community engagement, where we go out and we work in the local communities. We're then going to come up with the notion of sponsored projects, where local companies pay, instead of sending their money to an advertising agency, and I apologize if some of you are from advertising agencies, but we want to take and create funky, viral, user-generated stuff that nowadays you don't need an expensive TV commercial. You can do something funky and people love it because if you can get the marketing message out, that's what counts. The next thing we're going to do is use this money to hire local people to create these advertisements. You see? And that way the company who gets the marketing message out also hires local people. And they get the benefit of that. And finally, we'll talk about a software technology platform. And long ago when Paulo and I were here, we came up with the notion of a Chitidino dashboard. A citizen dashboard. Okay, we're going to talk about that. But the key thing here is I can invent all the great technology and give you great tools, but if people don't use the tools, if they don't get the benefit of the tools, it doesn't matter. So we must make sure that people use the tools and that normal people, I'm not talking about programming jobs. I'm talking about as the jobs and the people come down to the normal people, they can get jobs as well. So as I've been pitching this and trying to explain this to people around the world, one thing that's been apparent over and over again is that I have to explain at four different levels simultaneously. Okay? I have to explain a system level, a meta level, of a company that can solve some of the world's biggest problems. But then I must go down to an entrepreneurial level and I have to say, I want to create a specific company, Digital City Trieste. And I want to create a local subsidiary that has local investors and local employees who are shareholders in the company so we can all benefit from this local company. And then I have to get very specific and I have to say, this is at the community level. This is the project we're going to work on. And I have to get very specific about specific projects. Now again, I can't go on forever uh, today, I only have 20 minutes, but let's just imagine there's lots and lots of different kinds of projects. But ultimately, I have to show that there is benefit to an individual. Why should an individual care? How can I get a job? So to do this, we've developed a new kind of educational methodology. Because I've noticed that very much everyone here in the audience, we have the knowledge of all these intangible skills. But we must give it to these guys, and the taxi driver, and the, the college graduate who doesn't have a job. We have to get the knowledge to come down, what we say, disseminate the knowledge, to come down the pyramid of workers, okay? So if right now, when you create a project, typically a project only has professionals in the project. But if you can imagine that we have some professionals, and they mentor and help college-educated underemployed. These are people who w went to school, but they don't get a chance to take their skills and put them to work. So the professionals mentor and help the underemployed, and then those underemployed help and mentor the students and interns. So the knowledge disseminates down through the pyramid. And this creates a new kind of workforce training. Now, there is workforce training going on out there, but typically it's beginning level. They think if you train someone in Microsoft Excel, oh, you should be able to create a job. And we know that's not true. 
So when we come into a new community, we don't want to compete with this existing workforce training. We want to create an intermediate and advanced kind of classes that take the beginning students and move them into an ad intermediate and advanced class. This is one of my classes in Cleveland, okay? And what we do is we end up creating a cyber savvy workforce. We've tried to apply this in Jamaica. I'm talking to Kansas City right now. I've got a proposal in Malaysia. We're trying to do this around the world. And right now our challenge is we don't have anything to show. And this reminds me of what it was like for me in the early days of multimedia. Probably some of you are not old enough to remember, but a computer used to be a black screen with a green stripe along the bottom. And along comes this thing called the Macintosh. And I was the company that when the Macintosh came out, we tried to show people this is multimedia. Graphics, video, this is what a computer is. And people thought I was crazy. And I had to take their arm and sit them in front of a screen and say, look, that's multimedia. And it's a similar thing today. Most people think I'm a crazy madman. But soon I will go from crazy madman to genius again. Okay? So, now, we're not looking to educate everybody. Not everybody will be able to sit in front of a computer and make their living. What we want to do is identify the best and brightest. And we're not talking about just youth either. See, right now, about 40% of our population is being told, you're too old. Go away. And we think there's tremendous opportunity in what we call the baby boomers, in the moms who come back to work after having their children. In America, we have returning veterans from the military who are discarded. You see, there's all areas of population that can benefit from this system. So, again, we want to combine three different kind of workers in the same project. And we're going to get our money from three different sources because what we're doing is a balance between altruism and helping to create jobs and what I believe can be a very profitable for-profit model. So we will get some money from government and foundations. We will get some money from these sponsored projects. And we will get the rest of the money from our own platform and from investors. And there's many ways we can make money. I assume you all know of this thing called Groupon, right? And they're doing the coupons, etc. Well, the problem is that Groupon, they hire all these employees to be in a call center. And they call up all these companies and they sell them coupon deals. And do you know that over 50% of these merchants never want to do business with Groupon ever again? <laughs> they hate them because these are not authentic relationships. Now what we're talking about is setting up and training workers in local cities and having some of our young salespeople go off and make relationships with vendors so then once we have these relationships, we can go to Nike, Benetton, Fiat and offer them authentic relationships with our vendors, authentic relationships with our citizens. This is one of the ways we will produce viral marketing campaigns for these national brands, okay? We will have uh, premium subscriptions for our software. We will build into our software video help. So if you have the software, you're doing the training, and you ask a question, click, and up comes a human. And so you're talking, you're talking, you're talking. Like for instance, today, this guy who came and interrupted, He's so desperate to be able to reach somebody. Any opportunity he has, he grabs it. Well, this is the same thing with anybody who's on a video phone call. Once they make a connection, they will stay on forever. So we have to put a limit to how much the video phone call is, the length. So you pay some more money, you get more time. <laughs> Okay, so there's many different ways of personal cloud storage. See, we will teach people how to use free tools, but if you want to make it very convenient and have integrated personal file storage, personal cloud storage, then you pay us a little bit of soldi. So we're trying to come up with the right kind of models. And if we do data mining, and we start to go through all this data and monetize the data, we will share that money with our users. You see, this is the notion of our open platform. So ultimately, one of the things we can do, because we must work with local government, 
is that we have to bridge the disconnect between government and their citizens. Earlier today, we were talking about trust and how do we develop trust. Well, to me, I want to go out to local communities. See, what happened when I went to Cleveland is I went to many different groups and I said, do you have a website? And they said, oh, yes, we have a website. We paid $5,000 for it five years ago, and we can't afford to update our website. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I will create a website for you for free. I will teach you how to fish so you can keep your own website for yourself, and we will do this to you for free. And they say, mille grazie. And I say, prego. And then we have a good relationship. You see? And this is how we bridge trust. We build trust, okay? So building trust means that there is a term, I'm not sure if you have this here in Italy, we say public-private partnerships. This is when business goes and makes a deal with government for a new housing development or for a new shopping mall or something like that. And that's where business and government work together. But who they never include are the citizens. So we have to build new models that includes the citizens and direct benefits to the citizens, not just a benefit to the business people. See, we have to do this kind of stuff to bring real value to create real jobs. Now, I'll quickly explain to you how the system works. It's based upon a new attitude towards education, where we train people in the very intangible skill sets. I even put some Italian on the screen so you can read this here. Okay? And once we train people, we only want the best and brightest, and then we place those people into internships. Okay? Earlier today, we were talking about apprenticeship is a, a meaningful way to do this. Okay? Now, once we've got these workers trained, then we place those interns into projects, very specific projects. Earlier today at lunch, we were talking about interviewing senior citizens. I love the idea of producing live events, of creating a business directory, of creating games and many different kind of activities. The key thing, of course, is to train the trainers, to create get that dissemination of the knowledge down the pyramid so many different people can all train in this new attitude. And remember, it doesn't have to happen in a physical place. It could be virtual. So we could distribute the software and people would be using this stuff and the interns would be placed into projects because they learn while doing. Imparare facendo. Okay? You learn while doing. Now, we then put that all into the context of community engagement, where we're offering programs, creating projects, and offering services for free. See, in the workforce training world, they think of the student as the customer. So they charge the student money. And then when you set up a business directory, you think of the vendor as a customer. So you charge the business money to be in the business directory. This is the wrong place. This is choking off your development. This is choking off any development. So we know that citizens love to cluster and go to events. Like today, we're all coming to an event. We know that once we set up a project and the projects get going, the content will flow through the projects. We know that once citizens learn how to support each other and train each other, they will continue to do that. And we know that if we give away free tech support and we help people, we will build trust. Now, that all sits on top of a platform, a platform that aggregates content and aggregates people and aggregates services. These are all the different kinds of services we want to do. We want to do a, a help desk. We want to build in a built-in marketplace so people can buy and sell things, okay? And we want to leverage all this, all these activities and things, on top of a free citizen dashboard. And believe it or not, Paula and I came up with this idea 14 years ago. <laughs> all right, that all leads to jobs. Now, this platform that we are developing, I would write it in Ruby on Rails. I would give away all the source code for free. I would use Google Hangouts, which I understand we're using over here today. Thank you very much. We will use that to build our video help. We will build in a marketplace. We will support the standard of community activity feeds, which is what Facebook and Twitter is, but an open standard. We will get all our community members to create content channels of information, sometimes called citizen journalism. 
Okay? We want to encourage all these activities. We will train people how to use a video camera. We don't need expensive video cameras. I can use my iPhone. We will edit our video. It doesn't matter the production values, though I appreciate the high quality production value today, but we don't need this production value. We can do funky stuff that people communicate and entertain. Whoa, don't trip over that. Okay. Now, we're going to create this balance between the altruistic and the for-profit, okay? We're going to have many different kinds of activities and programs. We're going to have all these free services. Lots of multimedia. Okay, now, can anybody tell me what this is? Pierogies, pierogies. This is a Polish dumpling thing, okay? This, there are pirates in Tampa, Florida. Does anybody know who that is, Paolo? Hudi Leadbelly. Okay? And can anybody tell me what that is up there? Self-assembling polymer. Now, why am I worried about self-assembling polymers? Because it turns out the state of Ohio, which is where I'm from, is the number one state for polymers in America. $89 billion business. What is a polymer? A polymer is a complex molecule. That's all. <laughs> Meanwhile... There is a self-assembling polymer. Fascinating topic. So let's say I go to Procter & Gamble, okay? And I say, Signore, let's do a project. Let's create an iPhone game. The game would be called, What is the difference between floor wax and toothpaste? There is no difference, just in the molecules. So the game, you dive into the molecules and you change the molecules to create different kinds of green goop, okay? That's the game. Meanwhile, Procter & Gamble says, great, I can promote toothpaste, I can promote floor wax, okay? They get their marketing message across and they hire people in Cincinnati, which is where Procter & Gamble is from. So then we are a nonprofit organization, all the money they pay to us, they get a little tax break. So they're creating jobs, they're getting their marketing message across, and they're getting some kickback, okay? So this is the idea. We create all these different kinds of multimedia projects, which helps pay for the whole thing. Now you're wondering, how are you going to make money, Mark? Because all the money goes into creating the jobs. How do you make money? Well, it turns out there's a business called Digital City Market, sometimes also known as Smart Cities. All right? Right now, IBM, Cisco, Accenture, Capgemini, Signor Zamparini, right over here, they are going and building out gigantic broadband infrastructure, smart grid, you know, surveillance cameras, all this technology, right? And they build up their technology, build up, the, and when they create the Larga Banda, they stop. Signor Valdemarin, can you give me an example of a city that built out fiber optic infrastructure and then stopped. Trieste. <laughs> Trieste. This is what happened 14 years ago. Signor Ili, Sindaco Ili, had his friends from Telecom Italia. They laid out the Larga Banda. They installed the whole system. And the only day that he figured out, what's wrong? Dove il mio digitale servici? Where? They said, no, signore, sorry, you must pay us for the bandwidth. You create the digital services. And this is where we are today. In Kansas City, Google is going to come in and build out the broadband and stop. So where my new company comes in, this is the hardware infrastructure. We come in and we do the software infrastructure. We show them what to do with the bandwidth how to create the jobs. Look what's happened in Trieste. Niente. Nothing. So we would be a company that would come into different cities and install digital economy ecosystems. Systems that can create jobs on their own. All right? That's the business we're in. We must train people in a culture. A culture to be able to support themselves, to be able to work online, to be able to work as an independent worker. This is a project-based economy now. You see, in 1989, in 1990, we had a downturn. And then, 
We came back because all the executives picked up the phone. They called the HR department and they said, turn the faucet back on, start hiring. And in 2002, the same thing happened. We had a downturn. And then they said, turn the faucet back on and start hiring. Well, guess what has not happened this time? There's been no hiring. There is no future for us with these traditional old jobs. The future are project-based jobs. And so if they need some more workers, they ramp up and then they lay them off again. That's the realities of the marketplace. I just want to quickly show some of the screens from 14 years ago, a little historical retrospective from our project here in Trieste. All right? This was something we were building before it was called Ajax. We were building Ajax, okay? Smart, intelligent JavaScript. This is interface that Paulo did. This is the kind of multiple persona profile pages we were designing 14 years ago, all right? This was, Paulo built a QuickTime VR shopping thing for the Cope. You might remember that store, okay? We envisioned having cameras inside the club. So if I want to see which club was happening, you know, I could check out the cameras. This would, of course, be sponsored by Stock. Mille grazie. 